Meditation doesn't answer your questions, it destroys them. One of the most profound realizations I have understood, and this individual has similarly come to the conclusion of, is your self-love must be stronger than your desire to be loved. And you not only understand this, but you know this, you experience this when you actualize meditation into a fundamental practice that you do morning and night every single day, irrespective of uh, where you are and how you feel. If you're not happy now, there's no amount of followers, positive social media comments or Instagram likes that will ever change that. External validation isn't happiness. It's a hamster wheel. It's a trick. It's slavery. Validation is an inside job. The most convincing sign that somebody is truly living their best life is their lack of desire to show the world that they're living their best life. Your best life won't ever seek external validation, but insecurity continually will. There is much of this behavior that I think is important for me to highlight in relation to your goal, and it spans far beyond and above this idea of letting other people know that your life is so beautiful and content, but using external things, things outside of you, to actually give you a crutch to lean on for your happiness. One of the big ones I can think about is the relationships that you have. A lot of young men, when we go through puberty, when we're in our early 20s, mid 20s and late 20s, we seek to find our happiness in women. I know for a fact, when I turned 14, 15, I was obsessed every single day about getting a girlfriend, having sex, um, and all the kind of compassion and physical kind of intimacy that was associated with that particular predicament. But when I look back at my myself around that period, I was deeply, deeply insecure about how I looked, how I portrayed myself to the world, my abilities, my self-esteem. I was not content with who I was first and foremost before I seek to or sook to um, bring somebody else into in, into the uh, into, into my life. And you see this happen time and time again. There are certain women I know that they ca they can't be single by themselves for you know more than two to three months because they are sickened by themselves. They hate the idea that finally they have to look in that dirty closet of all the things that they've been avoiding. They have to look under the bed and realizing you know, realize their problems and they stuff that down with another relationship. You as a man can't do this and you as a man have to realize that your aversion tactics may be in something else. And typically it is, typically it is pleasure seeking behavior. It is you smoking too much weed, too much nicotine. It's you watching too much porn. It's you comfort eating. All these things distract you from the truth of the the, the graciousness, the divinity of the life that you really own. And if that hurts you, if that hurts your feelings, if you think to yourself, Joseph, my life is so terrible, my life is so terrible, you haven't realized it yet. You haven't really realized it yet. You haven't come home and just, just sat and be present with yourself. You can channel your own emotional states. The external doesn't matter. The external doesn't matter. There are homeless people in the, uh, in the city that I li uh, live in. And um, they're some of the happiest people I've ever seen. <laughs> some of them are the happiest people I've ever seen. But perhaps we're getting the, uh, away from the point here. And it's, and it's just channeling love starts with, with you. And, and that's a skill you're able to do. You're able to get happiness is a skill. To be happy is a skill. But many are just too lazy to learn it. This is a nice segue into you always being responsible for your emotional reactions. If you get angry and say X thing made me angry, you will get angry all the time. If you get angry and say I made myself angry because of X thing, you will get less angry. I don't even like to posit it this way. I like to say X made me experience the emotion of anger. Again, because the problem with these two things is the identification with anger made myself angry, made me angry. You have become anger. No, 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 no. This is the biggest mistake you can make in all your life, in all your fucking life. This is the biggest mistake that people make is identifying with negative emotion that they wish to not have. Let me say, you have all been angry, but you've misunderstood it. You can experience anger. You can experience the emotion of anger and not get angry. That's the difference. You can experience the emotion of desire 
and not be desirous. You can experience the motion of depression and not be depressed. The difference is observation versus identification. And that's the reason I, I largely put down to a lot of my success and a lot of, a lot of my, w why I'm so gracious of my life now is because I see through the facade of that. I see through the facade of identification and I know the truth of, truth of observation, that distance, that gap between who I am and the emotion I experience, not me becoming the emotion that I lose myself. Many of you have been losing yourself. All of your emotional responses are your fault and your responsibility, yes. Nothing can make you angry. Your thoughts about what happened made you angry. That's on you. If you realize that, you'll have the power to control it. If you don't, you'll spend your life triggered easily and unhappy often. Great way to posit it. Don't feed your problems with thoughts. Starve them with action. I love it. If you want to feed a problem, keep thinking about it. If you want to starve a problem, take action. Most of the harm starts in your mind and with you and your thoughts. Most of the solution starts with a decision, courage and action. It's very difficult to think about your depression when there is a 315 pound barbell on your back. Take action. Become present. Become home. You cannot refer to the thought mechanism when you were here now, when you were in the when you were in the the the, the motion of experience, let's call it. If you're truly present, you can't refer back to this technology. It doesn't happen. Some people call it flow. Some call it absolute con consciousness or single single pointed mind i call it presence life has an algorithm too just like social media has algorithms to give you more of what you're interested in life has an algorithm that gives you more of what you're thinking and what you're focusing on you can train your algorithm to make you more anxious worried or insecure by focusing on negative things you can train your algorithm for happiness success growth and focusing on positive things your thoughts become your decisions and then your actions your focus becomes your future. Many people are naive to the fact that you hold the pen to write your own story, but they are letting other things write them for themselves. And it starts again at the consequence of understanding your emotions and not identifying with them. If you can more readily seat, sit in the seat of the observer, then you can take more jurisdiction control about the direction that your life is moving in. So many of you are driven by anger because you identify with it. I will not let that happen. Allow yourself to identify more positively with uh, peace, with courage, with hope, with love. And rather serendipitously, you will see hope, you will see peace, you will see love every single day. It will take time. It will take practice because, you know, the world around us is orientated to make us more sensitive to negative emotions because of our survival needs and also because it creates clicks. But I promise you, if you observe with more fastidiousness the inner dialogue that is happening in your mind at every given moment and choose a different story to tell yourself you will see it manifest in the world around you if they're real they'll want to see you win if you ever feel nervous telling a friend or a partner good news don't get new friends or a new partner you cannot afford to have people in close proximity that don't want to see you succeed grow and progress They'll subtly hold you back with snide comments, negative feedback, and casual pessimism. In the short term, they'll have small effects, but in the long term, they'll lead you away from your potential and towards the same negativity that has consumed their lives. There is a term called projection that all of you should be familiar with. And these individuals who typically display this kind of negative behavior here, it is usually a reflection of their inner state, their inner insecurity about the shortcomings in their own life. And there is no helping these individuals, they have to help themselves. The best and most conducive thing that you can do, not only for you, but them, is cut the cord of your friendship and move on. You're both holding each other back. I've often made the point that many of the friends that we hang around with, especially through our teenage years into our early 20s and maybe even early 30s, are actually not our friends, but just people that we have gotten comfortable with drinking together or doing pleasure-seeking behavior together. Real friends are individuals that will be people you can, can contend with, that will push you, that will call you out on your shit, and will fundamentally be ecstatic at the premise of you making more money, increasing your status, giving back to the community, getting a great partner, and winning in general. And if I have not described the people most intimate in your social circle, 
you don't really have a social circle. You have a self-harming circle. It's time to stop harming yourself. Drop them. It will be painful at first. I had to do this shit. I had to do this shit. But I'm so far better off now. So far better off now. For one thing, I wouldn't be here. Your life will be defined by your ability to handle uncertainty. To get from a miserable place to a happy place, you have to be brave enough to travel through scary, vulnerable, lonely place called uncertainty. Choosing uncertainty over certain misery of your current situation is a decision that you have to make many times if you want success and happiness and work, love and life. You'll be defined by your ability to handle uncertainty. Avoidance or risk is the biggest risk. Do not fear the unknown. I think this point speaks for itself. Courage. Courage. I see so many cowards in men. So many men settling for comfort, for lack of challenge. And typically, I would say with my scientific hat on, it's a consequence of low testosterone levels because testosterone helps you or encourages you to seek competitive behavior, status-seeking behavior, to take risks because your recovery will be more rapid if you do fail. So if this is something that you struggle with, I strongly suggest you go and check your testosterone levels. You have nothing to find. Finding yourself is a pop culture lie. Finding your passion is another lie. Finding your soulmate is a further lie. These lies and the perfection they promise us, if we would only keep searching, stop us from working through the natural challenges with our careers, relationships, and within ourselves. There is no perfection, only room for improvement. Where you are is the perfect place you need to be. You don't need to be anywhere else. You don't need to be in Bali. You don't need that new flat. You don't need that new TV. You don't need that new car. You don't need that new computer. You are in the perfect place you need to be for your own growth. Stop trying to find it. The opportunity is here now. Take the lesson. Take the test. Take the class. And then you go on to the next. Your mental diet will determine your mental health. Comfort eating or negativity will make you unhealthy and mental weight is the hardest weight to lose. Like fast food, negativity often tastes good in the short term but will make you unhealthy in the long term. I mentioned before, be careful about what kind of content you consume. Is the content you consume on a daily basis generally uplifting you, making you feel hopeful and confident about the world, or is it dragging you down? Remember, we can get addicted to adrenaline and cortisol and negative emotion and anxiety and depression. It is addictive. It might be pleasurable in the short term to you know, watch these red pill content creators, but in the long term, it will make you mentally fat and sick. Your mental diet consists of what you watch, what you read, who you follow, who you spend time with, what you say, and what you think. If your goal is to have a healthier mind this year, start by removing all the junk food in your mental diet. I really enjoyed making this video today, gentlemen, because I believe that these are some of the most important lessons that I have certainly integrated and synthesized into wisdom in my life. And hopefully you can do the same. I'm curious, which one for you stands out as particularly pertinent to you? I think for me, the mental diet one is always something that I'm constantly trying to catch myself on and being mindful of if I'm even listening to music that is particularly low vibrational and putting me in a, uh, you know, a negative state is making me mentally fat and mentally unhealthy. So more recently, I've been listening to kind of ambient music without uh, vocals, uh, a lot of kind of composers like Ludwig Godfrey, I believe, and Hans Zimmer, lo-fi, classical even. What do you guys like to listen to? Leave it in the comment sections below. With that being said, these are not theories, these are facts. Speak soon.